Preppers are crazy. I mean, you look around. They're doing all kind of crazy stuff. They're getting food prepared for their families. <laughs> they're getting water set aside. You know, they're doing a lot of things that a lot of people consider absolute lunacy. But I'll tell you what's really happening. A lot of people are coming to realize that preppers may not be so crazy. I've always said preppers are crazy, but they're not as crazy as they used to be. I get a lot of questions about what I think about Doomsday Preppers. And to be honest with you, I was supposed to be on the pilot episode, but I changed my mind. But I'm going to tell you what, those guys at Doomsday Preppers, some of them are a little bit eccentric, but it sure has gotten a lot of people thinking. And while you may not want to do what they're doing, I definitely suggest that you take some inspiration from what they're doing. We are relying on a very fragile system and we need to be careful. There's no reason to go absolutely nuts, but there is some reason to become more self-reliant. And that is really my goal. In sensible survival, it's not about seeing if I can hoard enough food to last through an apocalypse but it really comes down just to being more self-reliant. I recently finished the book Lights Out by David Crawford. And as I was getting to the last few pages, my son sat down beside me on the couch and he said, Dad, he goes, what's that book about? He goes, Lights Out. He said, and there's a bulb on the front that's been busted. And I said, well, it's about a group of people that uh, the electricity's gone down. And I said, and they're just trying to survive until the, they can get the electricity back up. And he said, well, what happened? Does the world blow up? <laughs> And I got tickled at him, but you know, I really thought that's the way a lot of people feel. That if electricity goes out, if the water supply is cut off, if medical supplies are, are no longer, that all of mankind is going to perish. But I'm going to tell you guys, we've lived for thousands of years without electricity. And until re really recently in recorded human history is the only time we've ever had all these conveniences. We can live without electricity. We can live without all the modern conveniences. But the problem is, is we have forgotten our roots. And I think it's really important to get back to growing your own food, to harvesting your own water, and to living closer to the land and remembering where we came from. Guys, this is a very fragile society that we live in. And we need to be prepared in case there is a disruption. You know, we're being told that fresh water is getting less and less plentiful and we need to be careful. And I'll tell you what, the federal government's coming in and they're cordoning off a lot of this to restrict it from private use. You know, when you watch the news and it talks more and more about salmonella, about E. coli and all these things that a lot of these, this stuff is coming in with our food sources. Of course, our food sources are coming from other countries. Less and less food is coming from the U.S. That means we're becoming more and more dependent on other countries. And that to me is enough to say, you know what, I need to grow some of my own food. There's a dog in the background right off our property. That dog barks and barks. And I really tried to find a spot where I couldn't get that in the video, but honestly, I don't care how much property you have, I don't care where you live, you're not too far away from the touch of man and you need to be able to integrate yourself into that society. Listen, I'm not against progressive, to being progressive. In fact, if anything, I think we need to recycle more than ever and we need to care for the earth more than ever. But not through regulations and not through somebody telling me how to do it, but for me to do it myself, to be responsible and to be who I need to be as a person. Becoming a better neighbor, becoming better to one another, that is really the answer to bringing America back to where it needs to be. And for that matter, the world. Now being a prepper just means that you're just preparing yourself for any kind of crisis that could occur. It doesn't mean that you have to have a year supply of food or even six months, but it does mean that you need to have some provisions put back in case you have an emergency situation. And that's what sensible prepping is all about. Now us personally, yes, we're prepping and we're prepping for different scenarios. We're not really thinking of any one thing. The one thing we really want to do, and this is what we base everything on, is being self-reliant. Independent thinking and rugged individualism. There's nothing crazy about that. 
as I've always said, the people that are overinsured, that insure everything under the sun, are the same people that are saying that preppers are nuts. Listen, I just choose to be self-insured in certain areas. So maybe you think preppers are crazy, and maybe we are, but we're not near as crazy as those who trust in the system that we have around us. With what's going on in the world, with just terrorism, what's going on in Wall Street, what's going on in Washington, what's going on around the world, natural disasters, everything else. Man, if you're not at least putting back a little emergency food, I don't know what to tell you. Now, while there are those that are out there that are prepping, there are so many more that are out there not preparing. And because of that, your provisions, your food, your water, and the safety of your family is at risk. And you need to be ready to defend your hard work and your families. In a crisis situation, there will be a lot of desperate people out there. And while we want to help as much as we can, there's only so much that you can do. And once that line is crossed, you've got to be willing and ready to defend yourself and your families. Last night our dogs were just barking like crazy and as I went outside I could hear a big cat somewhere down in the woods. And so really that's what I'm doing today. I'm kind of looking around. There's a lot of sand right here along this creek bed. Just trying to get a feel for what's going on down here. Of course one thing that I did find was a bunch of footprints from someone else down here on the property walking around. You know, and that leads me to another thing. You need to be aware of your surroundings. You need to be aware of what's going on around you. Not necessarily paranoid, but just having a good knowledge of things that are going on. This around here, that's eh, probably no big deal, but at least I'm aware of it. Of course, that's why I'm wearing this Guide's Choice holster rig with this Springfield Armory Champion 45, just in case there's any kind of trouble. <laughs> or maybe if that dog doesn't shut up. <laughs> Here are the deer tracks. Of course, you've seen some of that on some of my videos. We have a lot of deer around here, and of course that would bring in some predators. Found this down here at the creek bed. I'm not really sure what this track is. It's a little bit too wide for a dog track, plus there are no nail prints in it. But, um, pretty good size. Yeah, but here's more of what I'm concerned with. These aren't my shoes. Another question I get a lot is, well, Don, you know, if things go bad, we know where to come. I'm going to tell you what, I'll help you some, but I'm not taking food out of my children's mouths to feed someone who knew it was coming and refused to do anything about it. That's what I told my family just a few weeks ago. And guess what? Now they're putting back food, water, doing a few things they need to do. You need to do the same. What kind of man is going to ride on somebody else's labor? Stand on your own two feet. Do what you know to do for your family. Yeah, preppers are crazy. They're crazy about freedom. They're crazy about liberty. They're crazy about self-reliance and about protecting themselves and their families and preparing for any kind of crisis situation. Preppers are crazy, but they're not near as crazy as they used to be. So all this video has to do with at least getting you to think. Just think about where you are. Think about how dependent you are. And if you are, you need to be a man and you need to take responsibility. Or you need to be a woman that's willing to take the responsibility for her family and do the right thing. And that is to put a few things back for a rainy day. And if you don't believe me, ask the guys right now in Alabama, in Tennessee, and some of those areas that have just gotten hit by tornadoes. And as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more fun gun reviews and sensible survival. God bless America, long live the Republic. How to shoot learning how to have tech. Don't call me crazy. <laughs>